Good morning, Bhante Arunabihari. Thank you, Bhante, for offering this morning's Dhamma Talk and a big welcome to our online listeners. Uh, this message is on behalf of our president, the president of the BSV, Adrian T. Thank you for tuning into the Dhamma Talk channel this morning. Wishing everyone uh, is well and keeping safe in this rather unsettled situation. And if you have fallen sick or not feeling well, may you be well taken care of medically. May you receive lots of spiritual support to help you through this turbulent period. And on this front, we hope that the BSV Dhamma channel is of some help to you. Just a few announcements to make. The NBM Monistics will be conducting a service to celebrate this year's Vesak at NBM. Due to the need for social distancing, the Vesak service at NBM will be live streamed from NBM on the Sunday the 3rd of May between 9am and 10am Melbourne time. You are invited to join this celebration and service of this suspicious occasion online by viewing it from your personal device or your computer screen at home. You can tune in using the same means that you are watching this talk right now. The next one will be a very special event with the, in which the committee and the NBM re residents are also excited and happy to share with you. And this is the long-awaited opening day of the NBM Sangha House and the NBM Kutis. But due to the current circumstances, we are bringing the opening event to you at, in your home. The event will be live streamed from MBM on Sunday the 10th of May from 9am to 10am. We will showcase the externals, external and internal finishings of the Sangha House and some of the Kutis. So remember to tune in on the Sunday to watch and share the joy of seeing the completed Sangha House and Kutis. We are very thankful and grateful to our, to our community and supporters locally and interstate and overseas for making this project possible and enabling this project to be completed on time. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Anumodana for all your great efforts, support and contributions. The next item is the Dhamma session organized by parents of the T uh, BSV Teens Group. There will be an interactive online Dhamma session on Sunday the 23rd of April from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Our resident NBM nuns, Ayo Pekka, Ayo Severa, and Ayo Severa will, will be facilitating the session. If any teenagers of age 12 to 18 years wish to join, please email teens.group at bsv.net.au expressing your interest to join. So as not to inconvenience our deokers and to work with the government to contain the pandemic situation, the NBM Ministics are temporarily not accepting cooked food for lunch, dana, until further notice. This ends my short announcement for this morning, and stay tuned to listen to the Dhamma Talk by Bhante Arunavihari. May you and your family stay well and happy. What is happening? Okay, all the listeners are welcome to BSV Dhamma Talk on Sunday. So today we couldn't uh, broadcast over the YouTube, but uh, we record this Dhamma Talk. So I am Bhante Aranavihari. So I was invited to give Dhamma talk this weekend, so this Sunday Dhamma talk. So, uh, first of all, uh, we must pay Buddha Dhamma Sangha, pay respect to Buddha Dhamma Sangha. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. 
Buddhang Dhammang Sanggang Namasam. Today I thought to talk about uh, how to calm down our minds because it is useful in this time period. It is it gives more much uh, importance for us because uh, we have to undergo a, a unusual time period. That, that means they usually we go out and do, most of the people in this world go out. But monks are different. <laughs> Actually, most of the forest monks uh, who much more prefer to stay in a forest or the secluded place for practicing meditation. But for normal lay people, they have to do their day-to-day -day work and enjoy themselves by doing things and uh, doing so many things related to the lay life. So, but uh, this time period, they have to stay at their home and uh, uh, do whatever thing they can do from their homes. Sometimes most of the people uh, to they don't have to do anything. So then they become, uh, their minds become uh, unhappy or boring or sleepy, whatever so negative mental states may easily can arise in, in mind. So therefore it is important to uh, practice the stillness of the mind, letting go all the thoughts and make your mind silent and still. So it, is, uh, it gives, uh, uh, then you can uh, abandon all unwholes unwholesome uh, mental states, negative mental states or unskillful mental states. So it is, it is useful. So uh, therefore, I would like to uh, remind uh, this, uh, uh, the Dhamma, according to, uh, which is uh, helpful to still your mind, calm down your mind, uh, let go all thinking and still. What are the causes and conditions helpful for stilling our minds. So the, uh, that depends on how you relate to your body and mind, how you take your body and mind. So how you think, the, how you understand your body and mind. Because uh, if we think our experiences uh, something created uh, by our wish or our will, so the, or the or we can control all our experiences, or someone else uh, affect our experiences, or external causes and conditions change our experiences. Yeah, there is there is some level of truth, but in the same time, we have to admit these all these causes and conditions are not under our control. So if we keep in mind this reality, so we can uh, abandon this unwholesome mentality. Because if we try to fix things all the time, then you are fall into restlessness or always doing things and becoming unhappy. Because uh, once you do something, uh, if you don't get the expected results, so you are become unhappy. But you don't. You have to understand these these circumstances, the, these causes and conditions always run by uh, the nature, or the the causes and conditions are driven by the the some some other uh, causes and conditions. Not actually your wish, your will also one one thing, but many other things also exist in this world. So therefore, it runs actually mostly based on the, the natural flow of happening things. 
Sometimes we don't know what is happening here. What are the causes and conditions behind this uh, natural flow of happening things? So therefore, we have to admit this uh, non-self nature. That means see, these are not under our control. And uh, these are change. Sometimes we, we choose something, oh, this is good, this is nice. But when, when it change, we are become unhappy. So that is, that is why the unhappiness come to us. So the, sometimes uh, the, the, the now we have to stay at our homes. The most people have to stay at their homes. So it is unexpected situation. So now gradually you are used to do it. But you have to face some unexpected circumstances time to time in your home. So then you are become unhappy, and sometimes uh, uh, the greed, hatred arise in your mind, and then uh, the, uh, the the wrong verbal actions, bodily actions arise, and sometimes create uh, uh, actually uh, bad uh, outcomes, create bad uh, situations in your home or where, wherever you are staying. So this, thing, this is the nature. If you are rightly related to your experiences, you never get upset by whatever thing you are experiencing. You just let the things be, let things go and be kind, soft and gentle. If you know this impermanent nature, non-self nature and suffering nature within us of we um, the, the always uh, uh, always uh, connected to our body and mind. So we our minds naturally become calm and quiet and let go things. So th therefore, uh, I I would like to talk uh, the the simple techniques anyone can use to to abandon. Uh, unwholesome mental states or unskillful mental states arise in your mind. So you can you can abandon by using simple techniques. So one one simple technique is just chanting. If you are a Buddhist, sometimes you may know some amount, some future or many chantings, because uh, depend on the, the different uh, cultural. Affiliation. That means if have which culture you were brought up. So, uh, they, uh, these different Buddhist cultures have different uh, uh, types of chantings. Uh, so you can use those chantings if you can uh, read the, uh, by reading a book and do chanting. That means uh, using a book you can chant. So chanting actually. Uh, Connected to your faith, because what, which, uh, whatever re the, the religion, you, you have the faith. So you can use uh, the chantings of uh, chantings related to that religion. Buddhism, Christianity, Islam, or Hinduism, whatever thing. So all these religions have uh, the, 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 uh, those, uh, the, the, the people who introduced those religions gave teachings. Those teachings are written down in scripts, so you can you can chant these things. Then uh, you can uh, recollect uh, the teachings in the same time. And if you know the meanings, sometimes uh, we are chanting in in uh, uh, dead languages. That means we actually we don't know the meaning, but we chant. So. Even though that kind of a chanting, sometimes if you are trained to listen to those chantings, our mind become uh, calm and quiet because faith and confidence arise in our heart. That is how we were trained, our mind, from small age. So that depends on which culture you born and lived. So uh, depending on your way of how you brought up. So some, I know the, some Christian friends, 
they, when they are uh, chanting, they chanting means they, they are they are they are they are singing their prayers in the church. When they are doing it, their mind become uh, calm and quiet and happy and blissful. So that is a great thing to arise in our heart. Even the, the Muslims, they chant the Quran in their mosques and their minds become very soothing, peaceful, calm. So it gives uh, strength. It, uh, it subsides all the, the unwholesome negative mentality. So all religions have this kind of chanting. So you can use these chantings to to still your mind or subside uh, the unwholesome mentality, calm down your mind. So it is beneficial in our day-to-day -day life because especially in, in this kind of situations, because when we go to our jobs or doing, doing whatever, if you focus to your work, sometimes the uh, mind is not much distract. Mind may not fall into uh, deep, unwholesome mental state that depends on where you work and uh, with whom you are associated with. So anyway, it is good to uh, understand when you are staying, when you have a free time, you can calm down your mind, let go all unwholesome mental states and give a rest to your mind, arousing the wholesome qualities of mind, arousing the faith and confidence in mind and subside all the negative mental state, greed, hatred. So this is a good good thing to practice because most people can do this kind of thing because uh, if, you have a, if you have a faith and confidence with any, any religion, you can do this thing. So, so for doing the, these things, the, uh, the most of the time, uh, I would like to remind the Buddhists to have the right understanding about uh, the Buddhists because uh, Buddhist beliefs or the Buddhist uh, faith. Because uh, uh, if we take the, the other religions, they believe a uh, God or Brahma like powerful entity which controls the all our experiences then they 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 believe to a certain extent our experience are experiences actually uh, the governed by a powerful god or brahma so then we are in in a deep stage we are passive we are not actually we can't do much about our experiences because these things are governed by someone else. But sometimes Buddhists misunderstand Buddhism. They think that uh, all our doings based on our wish. So then we have to work hard and fix all the problems. So this one actually come from Delusion, according to Buddhism, Lord Buddha taught, teach us this body and mind is a natural phenomenon. It is, it is not under your control. If you wish, may I have this kind of uh, feelings, perceptions, volition? Lord Buddha said, never happen. So these things arise based on causes and conditions. When the causes and conditions change, all your experiences also change. And all your, not only experiences, actually your volitions also change. And uh, when the causes and conditions disappear, all these forms, feelings, perceptions, and volitions also disappear. Your experiences disappear. Your experiences arise based on causes and conditions. When the causes and conditions change, your experiences change, your volitions change. And when the causes and conditions disappear, all your experiences disappear. So this is a reality of related to our body and mind. When you keep in uh, keep this understanding in, in your mind, so you relate to your experiences in a different way. 
then you you be, you create the ability to let go and free your mind easily. So you know you may not need to fall into the unwholesome mental states because you know all these wholesome and unwholesome mental states arise based on causes and conditions. However, all these mental states are impermanent, change and vanish. So nothing to worry. You can just let go and free your mind. So you can abandon unwholesome mental state very easily if you have this mentality. If you think you are the governor, you are the controller of all these uh, the mental states, then you try to control things. Then you try to, try to make things according to your wish. But the reality is these things arise not based on your wish, but based on many different co causes and conditions. Your wish is also conditioned by your experiences, previous experiences. So therefore, you have to understand this, uh, your internal faculties and external faculties. That means the, your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind, in the same time, the, the, the forms come to your eye. The sounds, taste, uh, sounds, uh, smells, tastes, and uh, touches, and thoughts come to your mind. These are the, or those are the external faculties, are also impermanent. Internal faculties, i.e., you know, tongue, body, and mind, also impermanent. Therefore, all your experiences are also impermanent. They are changed when the causes and conditions are changing. So they, when you accept this reality, so you are kind, soft and gentle to whatever thing you are experiencing now. So you don't expect much from your experiences. But you, you have, the chance, they have the ability to maintain a will, but you, are, you have no big expectations. So be, these expectations create suffering. So may I have this kind of feeling in future? May, the, may I have this kind of possessions, the, the forms, the, which come through your eye and nose, tongue, body? So you are uh, longing to these things. But these things are uncertain things. So therefore, if you have the right attitude to, towards your experiences, then you are not strongly expect these forms, feelings, perceptions, and volitions, and uh, uh, volitions, all these, these are the experiences. So then these, these things, you are, you are not crave to these things. You are not willing to have these things. If you, if you know the real, if you keep in mind the reality of these things. So that is that is uh, what the 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 that is how Lord Buddha taught us to understand this body and mind. If you keep this understanding with you, with the faith towards the teaching, so your mind never fall into the strong greed or hatred. Whatever greed hatred arise, you can just abandon, let go. And you can free your mind from greed and hatred. Because you are not strongly hold on to your feelings, perceptions, volitions arise in your mind. So it is a helpful thing to understand and keep in mind. So therefore, uh, it, it is helpful to calm down your mind. So uh, whatever thing come to your mind, you can let go and free your mind. You know. According to Lord Buddha's teachings, this uh, consciousness always based on delusion because once you come to a birth as a human or any other animal or any other living sentient being, so this consciousness always based on delusion. It is the way how it works. So once you understand this reality or once you heard about this reality, then you know all our experiences based on delusion. That's why we, whatever thing we, when we are experiencing, we have a choice. 
we know what is good and bad. But this knowing is changing all the time. And then our choice also twists to something else. So therefore, this, all these uh, feelings, perceptions, volition, volitions are always changing to something else. So you know that this is a reality. So therefore, we fall into suffering. Why? The external objects also change with the time. In the same time, your internal feelings, perceptions, volitions also change with the time. So therefore, we fall into suffering because automatically, whatever time when we feel anything, we, uh, the, our mind generates the, 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 the choices, craving. And we hold on to those things. When these things are changing, we fall into suffering. This is how it works. This is how it is automatically work in this way. When we understand this nature of our body and mind, we don't worry whatever thing arises in our mind. We, we, we have the ability to let go things. Be kind, soft and gentle to our experiences. Be kind, soft and gentle to our body and mind. You know the nature of this body and mind. So we, we cultivate that attitude towards our body and mind by keeping in mind this impermanent nature, non-self nature and suffering nature. So, uh, so that is the, this, uh, the understanding about all these forms, feelings, perceptions, volitions arise in our mind is, leads to suffering. We, we get the ability to let go and free our mind, free, make our mind free from all these forms, feelings, perceptions, and volitions. You will let go and we free our mind. We focus to the stillness of the mind. We value the stillness of the mind. Because all these forms, feelings, perceptions we take as suffering. So we just let go and free our mind. We use those forms, feelings, perceptions and, perceptions and volitions when it is necessary to use. It is need, it, if, it, if there is a need to use it. Because when we are living in this world, the, when the bo this body and mind exist in this world, so you have to feed your body. You have to make your mind happy. So, so for maintaining your body, so you have to maintain, uh, to, to, to feed your body and uh, wash it and uh, bring to the toilet. Uh, and for feeding, basically, you have to do a job and earn money, whatever thing. So you have to relate to the world. So therefore, you have to, you have to use your feelings, perceptions, and volitions when, we are, when you are dealing with the world, external world, and because for maintaining your body and mind. But when you, when you don't have to do anything, so then you can focus to the stillness of the mind and let go all thinking, all forms, feelings, perceptions, and volitions arise in your mind. You can just let go and free your mind. So it is beneficial for you. You, you can, at least you can temporarily subside the, the all suffering and free your mind from suffering related to your five sense world objects. So it is beneficial for you. So you see, once you experience this stillness of the mind, you, you identify, then at least that period of time, your mind is happy. Your mind uh, does not fall into suffering. You experience this reality within yourself. So it is a, it is a good experience. It is, it is a uh, constructive thing. That means the constructive means the, it, uh, it gives you uh, happiness and uh, satisfaction in your mind. Then it uh, leads to uh, develop whole, the skillful mental states, subside unskillful mental states. So this is this is uh, the so keep in mind this the the right view. So this is called right view. So the right uh, right when you are maintaining this right view towards your life or your experiences towards your body and mind, then. 
you can uh, abandon all unskillful mental states. You get the ability to abandon unskillful mental state and the cultivate the skillful mental states. So then I will read a, a small sutta. How Lord Buddha explained in some places this, uh, what is right view is. So, this is a sutta come in uh, Samyukta Nikaya, Nidana Samyukta, Ahara Vagga, Kachana Gotta Sutta. So, uh, if you, this, this sutta you can read in uh, Sutta Central easily, their website. So, I extracted this uh, sutta from the uh, uh, Sutta Central website. This is uh, Ajahn Sujato's translation. This so this is a link discourses 12. Uh, number 2, Fuel. Number 15, Kachana Gotta Sutta. Kachana Gotta Sutta. So I am reading the Ajahn Sujato's translation. At Savati. Then Venerable Kachanagotta went up to the Buddha, bowed, sat down to one side, and said to him, Sir, they speak of this thing called right view. How is right view defined? Kachana. This world mostly relies on the dual, uh, dual notions of existence and non-existence. But when you truly see the origin of the world with right understanding, you will not have the notion of non-existence regarding the world. And when you truly see the cessation of the world with the right understanding, you will not have the notion of existence regarding the world. The world is for the most part shackled to attraction, grasping and insisting. But if when it comes to this attraction, grasping, mental fixation, insistence and underlying tendency. You don't get attracted, grasp and commit to the notion myself. You'll have no doubt or uncertainty that what arises is just suffering arises, arising and what ceases is just suffering ceasing. Your knowledge about this is independent of others. So you have to keep in mind, this is, this is how Lord Buddha explained this Dhamma. This is the nature of your body and mind, how you take these things, how delusion the misguide you. So then Lord Buddha said, this is how right view is defined. All exist is one extreme. All exist. This is one extreme. All doesn't exist. This is the second extreme. Avoiding these two extremes, the realized one te teaches you, teaches by the middle way. Ignorance is a condition for choices. Choices are a condition for consciousness. Consciousness is a condition for name and form. Name and form are conditions for the six sense fields. The six sense fields are conditions for contact. 
contact is a condition for feeling feeling is a condition for craving craving is a condition for grasping grasping is a condition for continued existence continued existence is a condition for rebirth rebirth is a condition for old age and death sorrow lamentation pain sadness and distress to come to be this is how this entire mass of suffering originates when the ignorance fade away with when ignorance fade away and see, ceases with nothing left over choices ceases when ignorance fade away and ceases with nothing left over choices ceases choices cease when choices cease consciousness ceases when consciousness ceases uh, name and form cease when name and form cease the six six sense fields cease when six sense fields cease contact cease when contact cease feeling ceases feeling ceases craving ceases when craving ceases grasping ceases when grasping ceases continued existence ceases when continued existence ceases rebirth ceases when rebirth ceases old age death sorrow lamentation pain sadness and distress ceases when it how this entire mass of suffering ceases so this is how lord buddha taught to vachagot kachayana gotta so then we can understand all these things arise based on delusion when you subside the delusion everything go to the cessation so that's why lord buddha say we have to practice right view when we are practicing right view right intentions arise right verbal actions bodily actions and livelihood arise so then you get the ability to subside all unwholesome mentality by put an effort and make your mind clean so then it is the base, base of satipatthana and subside all the 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 conf, five sense consciousnesses and let go all five sense consciousness then you can achieve the total extinguishment of five senses the five sense consciousnesses and attain jhanas that is the meaning of jhanas so then that's why it is in, important to understand this total cessation so then you 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 can read you can get the benefits in in the in the present life in your day to day life by letting go things and free your mind from all this forms feelings perceptions and volitions relate to your five sense world and mental world later first you you let go the five sense world objects and free your mind and bring your mind to the stillness with uh, that uh, to uh, to to letting go all five sense world objects and forms feelings for perceptions related to all these five sense world objects so anyway i will read another sutta which gives uh, the 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 more analysis to the same this dependent origination so i think that these things are useful for people to keep in mind so then it is it gives uh, the understanding if you have little faith towards these teachings then you can investigate these teachings and see the truth within it and then you ca- can take into your practice and see the benefits you can get by maintaining this attitude towards your body and mind okay so i will read the next sutta it is a little bit longer but uh you can you can uh, get a little bit analysis about what lord buddha mentioned here in dependent origination 
So this is also come in Samyukta Nikaya, Nidana Samyukta, Buddha Vagga, Vibhanga Sutta. So in English, link discourses 12, uh, number 1, Buddhas, 2, Analysis. This is the English translation. This is Vibhanga Sutta. At Savati. Mendicants, I will teach and analyze for you dependent origination. Listen and pay close attention. I will speak. Yes, sir, they replied. The Buddha said this. And what is dependent origination? Ignorance is a condition for choices. The, here the choices is sometimes say the, this is Sankara. The Sankara is the volitional in, uh, the volitions or choices or intentions. The different way you can translate into English. But the ignorance is the condition for choices. The choices are condition for consciousnesses. Consciousnesses, consciousness is condition for the name and form. Nama Rupa. Name and form are condition for the six sense fields. The six sense fields are conditions for contact. Contact is condition for feeling. Feeling is condition for craving. Craving is condition for grasping. Grasping is condition for continued existence. Continued existence is a condition for rebirth. Rebirth is condition for old age and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness, and distress to come to the come to be. That is how this entire mass of suffering originates. And what is old age and death? The old age. The old age, decrepited, broken teeth, grey hair, wrinkly skin, diminished vitality, and failing faculties of various sentient beings in the various orders of sentient beings. This is called old age. Passing away, perishing, uh, disintegration, demise, mortality, death, uh, disease, breaking up of the aggregates and lying to rest of the corpse of various sentient beings in the various orders of sentient beings. This is called death. Such is, such is old age and such is death. This is called old age and death. And what is rebirth? The rebirth, inception, conception, reincarnation, manifestation of the aggregates, and acquisition of the sense fields of various sentient beings in various orders of sentient beings. This is called rebirth. And what is continued existence? There are these three states of existences. Existence. Existence in the sensual realm, the realm of luminous form, and the formless realm. This is called continued existence. And what is grasping? There are these four kinds of grasping. Grasping at sensual pleasures, views, percepts, and observances, and theories of a self. This is called grasping. There are uh, these six classes of, uh, and, and what is craving? There are these six classes of craving. Craving for sights, sounds, smells, tastes, touches, 
and thoughts. This is called craving. And what is feeling? There are six classes of feeling. Feeling born of contact through the eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind. This is called feeling. And what is contact? There are six classes of contact. Contact through the eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind. This is called contact. And what, is, what are the six sense fields? The, the sense fields of eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind. These are called the six sense field. And what are the name and form? Feeling, perception, intention, contact and attention. This is called name. The four primary elements and, the and form derived from the four primary elements. This is called form. Such is name and form. Such is name and such is form. These are called name and form. And what is consciousness? There are these six classes of consciousness. Eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind consciousness. This is called consciousness. And what are the choices? There are three kinds of choices. Choices by the way body, way of body, choices by the way of speech, choices by the way of mind. These are called choices. And what is ignorance? Not knowing about suffering, the origin of suffering, the cessation of suffering and the practice that leads to the cessation of suffering. This is called ignorance. And so, ignorance is a condition for choices. Choices are a condition for consciousness. The consciousness is condition for name and form. Name and form are conditions for the six sense fields. The six sense fields are conditions for contact. Contact is condition for feeling. Feeling is a condition for craving. Craving is condition for grasping. Grasping is condition for continued existence. Continued existence is condition for rebirth. Rebirth is condition for old age, death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness, distress to come to be. That is how this entire mass of suffering originates. When ignorance fades away and ceases with nothing left over, choices ceases, cease. When choices cease, consciousness cease. When consciousness cease, the name and form cease. When name and form ceases, the sixth sense field cease. When the sixth sense field cease, contact cease. When contact cease, feeling ceases. When feeling ceases, craving ceases. When craving ceases, grasping ceases. When grasping ceases, continued existence ceases. When continued existence ceases, rebirth ceases. When rebirth ceases, old age, death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness and distress cease. That is how the entire mass of suffering ceases. This is the next sutta. So this one explained uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, what is the meaning of all these words <laughs> they come in this dependent origination. So I think uh, you can read and understand these things and uh, carefully consider these uh, teachings. Then you can actually understand these are not very complicated things. When you read and try to understand these things, these things can understand. And in the same time, when you are practicing letting go, that means you're practicing the stillness of the mind, and enjoy the stillness of the mind. It gives a power and strength to your mind 
to understand these things because all these things uh, talk about talking in 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 these suttas are something not outside your body and mind it is within your body and mind so therefore you can investigate these things within your body and mind and understanding this nature of all your forms feelings perceptions and volitions relate to your body and mind so you can see these things within yourself so these are not very difficult to understand because all these things within yourself so when your mind calm and quiet and focused to one object you can clearly see and understand these things so that's why lord buddha encourage to practice this path when you are when you go to the deeper stages of the path you can clearly see these things within yourself but first of all you should develop you you should have to cultivate the faith and confidence towards these teachings so you have to reflect you have to reflect wisely on these thing these teachings and try uh, put an effort to understand the value of these teachings and you take into your practice when you are practicing you it is helpful to bring your mind to calm and quiet states and focus well focused states you can develop these mental states and then you can investigate how things arise and pass away within your body and mind you can clearly see these things within yourself so it is helpful to understand the reality related to your body and mind and it is helpful to subside all un un unskillful negative mental states and cultivate skillful and positive mental states in your mind so that is what i am uh, uh, i want to tell today so actually if you have any questions you can ask but now we don't have the online connection so so therefore uh, i am uh, going to finish my talk here so if you have questions you can post in uh, in uh, the comments so then uh, we can uh, try to answer in a later date so uh, then i i'm going to end my talk today so i i'm going to pay respect to buddha dhamma and sangha arahang samma sambuddho bhagava buddhang bhagavantang abhivadin swakato bhagavata dhammo dhammang namassam supati panno bhagavato savaka sangho sangham namami